We're going to get through as many as we can. And if there's time at the end, if there's questions out there that you still want to ask, we'll take those questions. So that last part where Jesse was speaking uh, to me uh, was at the Southwest Believers Convention in Texas. How many of you guys watched it online? Okay, okay. Good, good, very good. Grace didn't watch it online because she was there, baby. Go ahead, Grace. We were, uh, we're sitting there, we're, we're, we were privileged to sit in the front row, and, um, and, we're, and uh, I believe uh, Pastor George Pearsons, he, uh, invited, he invited uh, people to come down to the front to, you know, to praise and worship, and you know, those people that were, we were just kind of in the front, kind of just looking, looking at all, everybody, and, looking, and then comes off, there's Grace, I'm all <laughs> clear, and she, He's in there. She was in there right in the front, right there by the stage, just praising and worshiping, and I tell you. I was like, look at Grace. Go ahead, Grace. And then um, I said, all right, go on back to your seat now. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, kidding, I'm, kidding, I'm kidding. But um, it, it was a very it was awesome, awesome time. So if you have any questions, um, even from those, uh, from the speakers that you may have seen, um, uh, if we have time, like she said, if we have time, we'll answer those too. So um, if, if there is something in your notes that... Um, you kind of didn't understand what was said, then um, ask that as well. All right? So let's, let's get into it. Actually, Pastor, did you have something that you, wanted, you were going to speak on before we got into the questions? Uh, yes, I did. Yes. You got your Bibles out? Yes, yes sir. Go to Matthew chapter 24. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> if you look like I know, you would have sighed the same way. Yeah, somebody knows their word. Somebody know their word. <laughs> Matthew 24. Oh my God. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's go to Matthew 24 and let's start at verse 3. As, okay, I'll read from the, um, the screen, New Living Translation. Later, Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives. We're going we're gonna to go all the way to verse 14 uh, for note's sake, if you guys take your notes. Uh, later, uh, Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives. His disciples came to him privately and said, tell us, when will all this happen? What sign will signal your return and the end of the world? Jesus told them, don't let anyone mislead you. For many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah. They will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and threats of wars. But don't panic. Yes, these things must take place. But the end won't follow immediately. Nation will go to war against nation. Now, these are things that must happen, guys. Mm -hmm. Okay. And kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines, say empty stores. Empty stores. Empty shelves. Empty shelves. And earthquakes in many parts of the world. But all this is only the first of the birth pains with more to come. Then you will be arrested, persecuted, and even killed. You will be hated all over the world because you are my followers. And many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and will deceive many people. Sin will be rampant everywhere and the love of many will grow cold. This is subtle. This is a subtleness that happens. Mm -hmm. But the one, say but... But the, one, the one, come on, say it, the one, the one. Who, endures, who endures, say, I'm, I will endure. I will endure. I will endure. I will endure. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And, and, man, and the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world so that all nations will hear it. And then the end will come. Now, after verse 14 and before verse 15 is when the tribulation happens. Now go to the next verse, verse 15. The day is coming when you will see, 
what Daniel the prophet spoke about, the sacrilegious object that causes desecration standing in the holy place. This is the destroying of the temple. That happens after the church is gone. But verses 1 through 14, all those things, the famines and wars, rumors of wars and, and, and uh, earthquakes, that's today. We're living in those times. So let's talk about food shortages. We don't need to look to the news and then start to panic. We already know what's coming. The Bible already tells us what's coming. But don't you panic. That's right. Get in the word. The time is coming where you have to have God in your life. It's not even a choice. If you want to endure to the end, you must have God in your life. And not only that, he must be priority. Mm -hmm. He must be priority. Life and death will depend on you hearing from the Holy Spirit. Don't go over there. But I'm hungry. I need to go to the store and find some food. Don't go outside. Your life will depend on your relationship with God. Those times that the Bible describes in Matthew 24 is happening now. Make no mistake. We're in those times. Don't study the news. It just gives you fear. You go to the store and see empty shelf, you know what time it is. If you need to watch the news, I, I, I encourage you, Victory Channel, Victory Network. It gives you the news, but it puts in perspective how God sees the world mm -hmm. in the eyes of Jesus. Okay? So I encourage you to do that. Amen? Amen. All right. We good, right? Yes. Ain't no need to panic. We don't need to fear. We got God. Amen. But there's those out there who don't. And it's up to us to let them know. Amen? Amen. 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 And amen. Okay. Thank you for reminding me about that, Carmen. Now we can get to these questions. Okay. So let's jump right in. Uh, the first question is regarding the uh, message you've been teaching, actually. Mm -hmm. It says, how do you know if it is God's vision or your own vision for your life? Okay. How do you know if it's God's vision or your own vision for your life? Yeah. So we've been speaking about this. Mm -hmm. How do we know? If it's your vision versus God's vision. That's a great question, but this is exactly what we were talking about. So if you remember last week was point number two, right? Point number two last week was um, how, to, how to operate, how to get and operate in God's vision. To do that, we must start by serving God and not quitting. How do we get God's vision for our life? When we start serving, start right where you are. Don't despise the small things. Don't despise small beginnings. Mm -hmm. So if, if you want to know what God has for you, then start serving. And don't quit. Be faithful. Why? Well, when you start serving God and you work as unto the Lord, Things will be revealed about yourself. Right now, like if you go and you're working for someone else, you get offended. And what you say, my boss is a jerk. My supervisor is a beep. Hopefully you're not, you know, going that far. He, keep, he makes me keep crazy hours. He's always making me work overtime. He said this. He did this. In other words, you get offended and you blame everything on the other person. Mm -hmm. But when you start serving the Lord and you work as unto the Lord, well, you're not working for this person that may be over you, your supervisor. You're working as unto the Lord. So even if that person is the biggest jerk in the world, you're working as unto the Lord. So now it takes you to conform to God's word and not represent your attitude. You must now change and not quit, not get offended, not get yourself too busy. 
Because when you follow and do what God's called you to do, then you get too busy. Well, you're saying, God, you're not important to me. You're not the most important thing in my life. And, and whatever it is you step down for, you're saying that's more important than God. Whether it's your attitude, your job, your schedule. You're saying, Lord, that's more important than me serving you. Well, you can't expect God to give you a vision. You can't expect God to, to lead you into what he desires for you to do because you just mess it up. Why would I mess it up? I know it's for you, Lord. Well, you can't even do it here with the small things. Because where he wants you to go requires faith. Where God desires for you to go requires faith. It requires depending on him. So that's how we start. You start serving. Start serving in just the smallest area and be faithful. And God will grow you. He will mold you, shape you. You find out more about yourself. Hey, I don't like when people roll their eyes at me. Huh. Of course not, right? But what else? You start to self-evaluate. You self-evaluate, right? And you grow. Lord, I'm doing this for you. I know he's a jerk, but Lord, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this for you. I'm doing this for you. I'm doing this for you. And he's shaping you. You're walking in love. You have to walk in forgiveness. And then promotion comes. And then there's the next, there's the next job. Okay, you got more responsibilities. It grows and it grows and it grows. Then God will download and you'll find out who you are, what you like, what you don't like. And God will show you, eventually show you what he's created you for and give you that vision. And that's why you saw uh, Brother Jesse Duplantis speak to the kids. They're faithful. They are faithful. They're more faithful than I was at that age going to church. They are faithful. Well, God said, I'm going to reveal this to you. Praise God. Um, let me make sure I don't leave anything out. Go over the notes I wrote down. Oh, yeah. After that, you have to separate yourself from the world. You must separate yourself from the world. The world constantly wants to be an influence on you. The world constantly wants to be an influence on you. As long as the world is influencing you, God isn't. You have to leave some things behind. God, the first thing God told Abram was leave your father's house. I don't want any influences. I want to be your influence. I want to have your ear. Leave your father's house. What is God telling you? Leave your job, maybe. Leave the team you're playing for. What is he telling you to leave? Maybe your family is a distraction. God knew that Abram's family was going to be a distraction. Leave, move, get out. And once he did, by faith, God revealed to him, okay, now look up. Look at the stars. Amen? Amen? So we must separate ourselves from the world. Don't be friends with the world. Stop trying to balance it. Stop trying to play in the world and, and, and play with God. If I go and I look at your Facebook, what am I hearing? What am I seeing? Am I seeing you trying to be like the world? You got the latest dance fad or whatever it is, challenge? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Why are you trying to be friends with the world? How are you talking? What language are you using? Will the Lord be pleased with the language you use? What's influencing you? What's influencing you? What has your heart? What has your attention? What's attractive to you? What's pulling you? Separate from it. God will never, ever promote you as long as you're friends with the world. It won't happen. You're only fooling yourself. And in the times we're in, you cannot afford to do that. Amen? Amen. Finally, after we've separated ourselves from the world, after we start to serve and we don't quit, listen and obey. 
You can do all those things. But as soon as the Lord tells you to do something and you don't think it lines up or you think, oh, well, no, that's too tough, that's too hard, it ain't happening for you. Because God will always direct you to do something you don't think you can do. Always. Always. He'll always tell you to do something that you might not be equipped to do on your own. Why? Because he wants your faith. He doesn't need your strength. He don't need your abilities. He does not need your abilities. Well, I went to school and I went to seminary and I know the word. Back from the word. Nope, he don't need that. Paul said, I kind of was dumb. Today's words, crap, trash. He doesn't need that. Andre Crouch got saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. Never knew how to play the piano. Boom, start playing. He never knew how. God downloaded it. So he th- you think he needs your abilities? Well, I think, um, <laughs> nope, he doesn't. All he needs is one thing, your availability. Your obedience. That's all he needs. Just obey. Anything else you think you got going for you, it's trash. Well, I went to school for this. Who cares? That means nothing to God. So we need to learn how to listen and obey. That's where your vision is. That's where your victory is. Listening and obeying. Say, I will. I will. Listen. Listen. And obey. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. There you go. No matter what. No matter what. Now, it's a process. It's a process. So don't think that, oh, I missed it and get all down on yourself. No. No. Everyone has done that. Just get up, dust yourself off, and get going again. Oh, you know what, Lord? I missed it. Okay. Just don't miss it tomorrow. So don't get down on yourself. Repent. I mean, change directions. Repent and, get, and, go, and go on. Amen? Amen. Uh, there you go. You want, you want to add something? More? The thing that keeps coming to my mind about your vision versus God's vision mm-hmm. is I've learned from, from past experiences that when it's my own vision. It's self-serving? It is self-serving, <laughs> but I've had to compromise in some way. Mm. So without going into detail, you guys know the story about when I got my car, and I, mm. and I thought this was the car for me. The but I was the making word. a lot of compromises. And when it's, mm-hmm. when it's my vision that I'm trying to make God back, mm-hmm. there's compromises that shouldn't be there. When it's God's perfect vision for That's you, true. you won't have to compromise. Mm-hmm. Like, for example... You say you've been called to the assembly church. This is your church. This is my home. This is where I belong. And then two months later, you get a job offer, and it's in New York. And so, oh, I got to fly to New York. It no longer but fits. but mm-hmm. you're compromising because you said last month that this was where you were supposed to be. So you got to make sure of the day. The devil will come as an angel of light. So he will come with this great big opportunity that maybe is to trick you or to get you off course. And so you end up compromising. Refuse to compromise. Uh, when it's God's will for you, you won't have to compromise. When it's his vision, you don't have to compromise. Whatever you compromise for, you're always going to have issues in that area. Yes. You're always. So if you go and you're chasing money, you're always going to have issues with money. Sometimes you've got to say, hey, you know what? I don't care. God, you're the most important. Yes. We don't have, we don't have money issues. We don't. Because God is our source, and we don't chase money. We don't chase money. We chase God. Now, I wish, I wish, open up the the top of your head and just put that in there. It's just so you can know, and you see the other side of that. It's not a struggle, because we don't chase money. We chase God. We chase his word. Just give me a word. Give me a word. That's all I need is a word. God, what do you have for me? I want somebody who don't know me. Give me a word. Mm -hmm. That's all you need is a word. If it was a choice between, hey, here's a job making $200 an hour or a word from the Lord, oh, my goodness. I want the word. Why? Because old jerk so-and-so can fire you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, you made $200 an hour for two weeks. What you going to do now? I want a word from the Lord. 
a word no one can come against. You have to see it that way. So if you haven't gotten a word from the Lord, you're not chasing God. You're not chasing him. You're not chasing the word. You chase the word. Why? So the blessing could chase you. Come on. Ooh, that's good right there, isn't it? I don't understand. You better write that down. That's Deuteronomy 28. Mm -hmm. It says it will overtake you. The blessings will overtake you. It will overtake. What does that sound like? What is that? That means it's chasing you. That means I'm busy doing what God calls me to do, and somebody jumped on my back. What is it? The blessing. <laughs> the blessing jumped on my back and tackled me. Well, jump me, tackle me, dog pile. Come on. You understand what I'm saying? I want the blessing to overtake me. Kidnap me. You know, I saw a picture. The blessing jumped out of a van, put the cover over your head. And, <laughs> I mean, just, just have your way. That's where you got to see it. Amen? Amen? You guys understand that? Okay. Let's, okay. We'll take it let's, let's, let's move on. So if y'all ain't got it, your wood's wet. I'm just kidding. We're going to switch gears a little bit. The next question says, how will we recognize family in heaven? How will we? Mm -hmm. how By will looking we? at them? I um, <laughs> um, <laughs> I apologize. I'm getting all slick. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm guessing the question is, will we recognize family in heaven? Not how we will recognize, right? Okay. Am I right? I don't know who asked this question, but okay. Um, will we recognize family in heaven? And the answer is yes. We will recognize family in heaven. Um, uh, in Luke, Luke chapter 16, it talks about the rich man and Lazarus. Mm -hmm. Well, they knew each other um, on earth earlier. And the rich man recognized, actually recognized um, uh, Abraham and Lazarus. Mm -hmm. So he called him by name. Right. Now, of course, he never knew Abraham, right? He never knew Abraham. Um, but he recognized Lazarus and who Abraham was. In fact, Jesse Duplantis, you just saw the video of, he had an encounter where he actually went to heaven and he saw Peter and he knew who Peter was right away. He doesn't know how Peter looks. There's no picture of Peter. You don't go to First, Second Peter and have a picture of Peter doing this. <laughs> that's not. That's not. I mean, right? Uh, you can't go to Wikipedia and be like, "Oh, this is Peter." No, there's no picture of Peter. And uh, he described him a man with reddish hair, uh, and he recognized him right away. Um, so, to answer your question, yes. Um, and then in Luke nine, um, nine, Luke nine twenty-eight through thirty-six, um, about um, where. Uh, Peter, James, and John uh, saw the transfiguration of Jesus. Um, they recognized Moses and Elijah. And, of course, you know, Moses has been dead for you know, 1,500 years and Elijah almost 1,000 years. So, of course, they never seen them, but they recognized who they were. So will we recognize our loved ones, our family in heaven? Absolutely. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. That's all I got to say about that. Any questions from that? No? Okay, okay. Are you guys enjoying this? You guys good? Yes. Okay, all right. Got quiet and kind of, okay, make sure you're not asleep. Okay, we're still talking about heaven. When we are in heaven, will memories of those that are not in heaven cease? Will memories of those who are not in heaven cease? Yes. Yes, they will. So you won't know old slew foot so and so, oh you know, <laughs> uh, jive and jive turkey so and so. No, you won't. You won't know any of those guys. The, the, the memories will cease. Um, in Revelations, uh, Re you can put this on the screen actually. Revelations twenty one, and we're going to read. Um, uh, let's read one through four. I'll start at the beginning. Revelations twenty one one through four. New Living Translation is fine. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Now this is after Armageddon. So this is, this is, this is after the rapture. This is after the second coming. Uh, a new heaven and a new earth, okay? Uh, for the old heaven and the old earth has disappeared, and the sea was also gone. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven 
like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a loud shout from the, from the throne. Rodney, I love you. I'm just kidding. Uh, saying, look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. Now, here we go. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. Amen. So that one that you love and they didn't make it to heaven. No, you won't remember them anymore. There's no sorrow. Now, this question reminded me of something that I often tell myself since my brother went on to be with the Lord. And that is, you cannot think of, you cannot comprehend or understand heaven in your current mind, in your current state. Mm -hmm. It's impossible for you to grasp. My brother isn't sorrowing over us here now. He's not. He's not. He ain't worried about us. <laughs> In fact, he's not worried about anything here that's going on on earth. He's not concerned. For him to be concerned about what's going on here, heaven's got to be lack of some stuff. Well, glory ain't that much glory if you're going to look back down here. It doesn't even compare. It doesn't compare. You guys understand that? It doesn't compare. Well, how can, you know, he grew up with a... You can't comprehend that. You're trying to think with your finite mind the infinite glory and wisdom of God. You can't. You can't. Know this. The Bible says, this life here is but a vapor. Yes. Gone. Like that. You can't comprehend forever. You can't comprehend forever. But wait, 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 wait. So when I'm 2,000 years old, I mean, what? I've been have done everything there is to do at 2,000 years old. Nope. Nope. And you can't comprehend that. So know that heaven, being with God in glory, compares nothing down here. But so many people throw away their lives off this vapor here and now and mess up the forever. Mm -hmm. That's what's horrible. That's horrible. You mess up your forever because of this vapor. Vapor is this. You smoke. You see the smoke and it's gone. Gone. That's what a vapor is. So you mess up forever for that? Oh, it's fun while it lasted. Okay. Okay. I have a question about, it says a new heaven. Uh, huh? what, is, what does it mean by new heaven? Heaven and earth will pass away. So will earth cease to exist? No. Nope, not at all. Um, this earth and how we see it and as we know it will not exist. So when we go to heaven, that's not our final destination. In fact, not to get too much into it, um, only the church will rule with God. Only the church. Let's take the thousand year, the, the thousand year reign, the millennium. Well, Satan is thrown into the bottomless pit. They're going to be mortals. It says a person 100 years old will be called a babe, a baby at 100 years old. The lion will lay with the lamb. It's going to be total peace. Will people still die? Yes. They're not immortal because remember, there are those who made it through the great tribulation. 
They don't have glorified bodies. We do. It just won't be any destruction. It won't be any killing, no sickness, no disease. So we'll be ruling the church. There's tribulation saints. What are they doing? They're not ruling. They're servants. They're serving the throne of God. They're lined up in front, of, in front of the throne. Only the church will rule with Jesus. You gotta know your word. Get in your word. Study it. Okay? So, heaven as it is now, the earth as it is, will pass away. And it'll be a new heaven and a new earth. Okay? So. Okay. All right. Good you guys right are, yeah, you guys are quiet. Are you guys thinking or are you asleep? Mm? You guys, you're with us, right? You get, with, oh, uh, uh, Grace. Had a, huh. I'm just going to go that to mic's the, hot. Uh, Can you turn it down, sir? the basis uh -huh. on the tradition of the religion of uh -huh. our people. Um, I heard that you know, when our loved ones is in heaven, there is still a connection for them to be watching over us. <laughs> so I just want you to touch on that. Yeah. No. Um, no. Uh, hmm. How can I put this? I've answered it um, a little bit already as far as... Um, they're not concerned with us down here. Those are some crazy looking shoes, brother. I <laughs> just noticed I'm like, whoa, whoa, he like Beastmaster. Anyway, um, um, I apologize. Squirrel. Uh, uh, the Lord has given his angels charge over us. They watch over his word to perform it. So when we speak the word, the angels are ministering spirits designed to go out and do the voice of God, his commands. We give the word of God those commands. That's who's watching over us. Holy Spirit dwells and lives in us. Jesus. Oh, I'm on her left. So Jesus, pretend she's on the other side, is doing this. Now, God, can I go get them now? Lord, now? How about now? Can I go get your people? Can I get them now? Can I go get them now? And God's like, not yet. Not yet. That's the order of things. Now, there was another account of someone going to, went to heaven, and they're preparing the marriage feast of the Lamb. The marriage feast of the Lamb. That's what they're preparing for. That's what those that have passed on are preparing for right now. Amen? So that's, that's um, they're not concerned with us. They're not concerned with us. Now, there is a teaching that I'm in the middle of, I haven't finished, whereas we're seated in heavenly places. God is always now. There is no past or present. It says God is the same yesterday, day, forever. Why? Because he is. Now, if you can wrap your mind around this, God is above time. God isn't dictated by time. God is not dictated by time. His grace is is long-suffering simply because he desires or wills that none should perish, that all should be saved. He wants to give you, you know how like when you pouring out soda out of a can, you want to get the last drop? No, come on. Right? He wants the last drop. He wants, he wants everyone to be saved. He doesn't want any to perish. Only God knows the hour, not even the sun. The sun wants to come get us. 
Man, that's my body down there. We're brothers, we're grafted, we're, we're him, we're, we're heirs. He desires for us to be with him. People up there ain't worried about us. They're not worried about us. For them to concern, for them to concern themselves about us down here, a little question, well, why'd you leave in the first place? I kind of asked my brother. When I get up, I'm going to slap him. Right? But it's going to be so awesome that that won't even come to my memory. I'd be like, I see why you left us. I would have left too. Paul said, to live is Christ, to die is gain. He said, whether in the body or out of the body, I don't know. It was a vision or if they took me or I don't know. Do you know that there's colors that we, our eyes can't even pick up? Your eyes, you're not your eyes can't even pick up. There's more colors that you will see when you get to heaven. There's a color called glog. It's a type of green. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm making up stuff now. But we can't compare our now to heaven. Amen? Amen. Say, I want to go. go. But not now, but not now, but not now. We got work to do. We got work. Now, yeah, there you go. Come now, Lord Jesus, come. But we got work to do. Amen? Amen. 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 Okay. Okay. Those are good questions. We got a lot of questions. I know. And the next one, moving on. If God sees the end from the beginning, how can we have free will? If God sees the end from the beginning, how can we have free will? Okay. I know I'm the pastor, right? Hopefully, when I say something, you do it, right? Now, I know that I know that I know that I know that everybody will stand up when I ask you to. Stand up, please, everyone. You too, Cameron. Don't make me be a liar. Okay. You may be seated. Now I knew you were going to stand up. Did I make you? Well, there you go. Let's answer your question. Just because I know it doesn't mean I made you. Huh? Okay. You, you have free will. I understand. He asked you to choose life. Mm-hmm. He knows if you're going to or not. He knows if you're going to or not. It's because I asked you. I didn't make you. So I do trifling. Stand up. He ain't going to stand up. (laughs) Just because God knows the answer, he didn't make you. Mm -hmm. We get predestination all messed up. Mark, stand up for me. Nambi, stand up for me. Nambi, hold your hand. Um, Come here. Just turn around and face that way. If I call these two to go sit down in their chair and I know that one of them won't, I have pre-knowledge to say, I know this guy's trifling, he don't like me, he he don't do what he want to (laughs) do, right? Then, did I make him do what I already knew that he was going to do? No. Predestination is this. We're the church. The church has a pre is predestined to glory. The church is predestined to the glory of God. That we're heirs. Right? Right. We're traveling in a certain direction. But it's their choice to get on or off. You say, okay, I'm done. Go over to, the, to your right. So he just got off the, the, the boat. He just got out of the church. The church is still going to where it's going to go. It's been predestined. It's going to go take off from this port, and it's going to that port. Mm-hmm. Nothing can stop that. Mm-hmm. The church is predestined. Mm-hmm. Are you on board or off? He's on. So the lives weren't predestined. The church was predestined. 
So that's predestination. You may sit down. Get back on the boat. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. There you go. <laughs> he said, I thought about that too. I like the way you think on that. Yeah. I was like, you ain't going to leave me off the boat. <laughs> you ain't going to misinterpret nothing. Yeah, there you go. Good job, man. That's good. Um, yes, don't overthink that question. Yep. It's very simple. Very Just simple, because yeah. God knows the answer does not mean he's making you do it. Right. You're not a puppet. You're not a puppet. You have free will. Uh-huh. So I'm glad we've laid that to rest. Yeah. Thank you. Hopefully. Pastor. Yes. All right, let's move on. The next question is this. Should we love ourselves before we can love someone else? And I'm going to start off. I'm going to answer this one if it's okay. Well, okay. All right. I'm going to start off by saying no. And let me qualify that because I don't want us to get mixed up in the terms that the world uses. There's so much, oh, I got to love myself and I got to take a self-help day. I see people post all the time, you know, I'm going on a self-care day. I got to take care of me. Uh, Pastor teaches us it is not our job to care for ourselves. That's God's job. So loving ourselves, uh, love Charity, by definition, is about others. What we do need to do before we can love someone else is know who we are. So let's use biblical terminology. We need to know who we are in Christ. We need to know our identity. We need to know that we are valuable, that we're a new creation in Christ Jesus. So I've got scripture and scripture and scripture if you just did a, a word search about your identity or who you are in Christ, that's what you need to get before you can love someone else. Once you know who you are, that you're a king, he's made us kings and priests forever. We're the head and not the tail. All these things that describe who we are in Christ, that's what will enable you to uh, uh, love someone else. So it's not about loving yourself. I mean, it is not about that. God loves us. We love others. But I know who I am. So let me just give you some, some verses. If, if you want to know who your identity is, what your identity is, and you want to study it out, just write these down. I'm going to read 2 Corinthians 5, 1 through 30. Just kidding. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and, this was, and this was First Lady Carmen's last day. I know. Pastor's always giving me a heart to everybody, actually, about how many scriptures I read. I'm going to read them off. You write them down if you want to go to them later. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. 1 Peter 2, 9. Galatians 2, 20. Ephesians 2, 10. Romans 8, 17. You guys can't write that fast? It's going to be on video. It's going to be on the video. Go back. Pastor, oh, yell at me if I take too long. My favorite. Psalm 139, 14, you were fearfully and wonderfully made, and this I know quite well. So get to know who you are in Christ. It's not about loving yourself. It's about knowing who you are, holding your head up, because I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I don't think I wrote that one yeah. down. Um, but yes, go back on the tape and get those scriptures. Look them up. Uh, that's how you can love somebody else, because yeah. you're not worried about yourself. Because God's got me. Mm -hmm. I can love you completely, fully. Amen? Mm -hmm. All right. Knowing who you are and who you are, who you belong to, and who you serve. Amen. That's what it's about. Yes. And you can't, you can't love someone else until you do that because then you're loving out of your own strength. Yes. You can't love someone else out of your own strength. That's why divorce happens. Because you're loving the way you can love. Instead of how God's telling you to love. When God, when you love someone God's way, you're not thinking about yourself. Some of you are too selfish to love. You're too selfish to be married. Because you're constantly thinking about yourself. And what about me? 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 And what about me? It's about others. It's about others. Love is about others. It is. Amen. And to give you an example, so when Pastor and I were dating, we, we, uh, we dated for six years, right, Pastor? About five, six, six years. Five to six years, 
off and on because um, he broke up with me like five times. But that's hey, okay. sometimes the grass is greener. Stop. But um, then it wasn't. And I remember. I, I'm honest. I remember I had a really hard time with that because I did not know who I was. I did not have my identity in Christ. I was saved, but I didn't know a whole lot. So I did not have my identity in Christ. And that made, the, when we did get married, it made the first few years of our marriage not good. It made it very hard because I didn't know who I was. And I was trying to get something from you that you were not designed to give me. And I refused to give it. And only God can mm-hmm. complete you. Only yeah. God. Yeah. Let me say that again for the, the women in the back. Only God can complete you. So don't look to a spouse. Yep. Don't look to a man. Men, yep. don't look to a woman mm-hmm. to complete you. Only God can do that. And once I learned that I wasn't going to get that hole, that God-shaped mm-hmm. hole that everybody has, he wasn't going to be able to fill it for me. And I allowed God to do what he, was crea- what he created me to be, to be that for me. That was jumbled. <laughs> Yeah. Once that happened, um, it got better. So trust now, me what if that. I would have given in to that? Yeah. What if I would have given in to me? To, oh, okay, I'll give in to her and do all this, do all this. Where would we be today? Not here. Not here. Oh, Pastor, you're mean. And I know some of you think that. Oh, well, you need to be more soft. You need to be more compassionate. No. And I don't do it. I, I, I do what I do for a reason, for a purpose. You need to grow up and look to God. Don't look to anyone. I'm not going to coddle you. I know that that's going on. I will not coddle you. I will not, oh, poor baby, you'll make little then. Nope, that's trash. It's junk. So I won't give in to that. I wouldn't have the powerful woman of God sitting next to me now if I did that. I will not give in. So if that's what you're looking for, you're looking for something soft and loving, and you're in the wrong place. He has made us kings and priests. Amen. Grow up. Grow up. Pick up your sword and do what God's called you to do. Well, you're just mean. Bye. Leave. <laughs> you want to miss it? Go. But I will not cater to that. That leads to destruction. That's what the devil wants. No. You are more than a conqueror. Amen. Act like it. My goodness, you got me hot on that. All right. Let's go. Next question. And amen. This is a good question. Is there a right or a wrong way when praying in the Holy Spirit, uh, praying in tongues? At times I feel drained, and at other times I am pumped up, and I don't want to stop. Okay, um, I'm going to read my answer first. Um, Praying in tongues is just that. Praying in other tongues. It's not babbling. It's not making noises. It's speaking. So as long as you are doing this, then there is no wrong way. You will start out as a baby. You might say, blah, 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 whatever, something like that. I don't don't know. Uh, Yeah, anyway. Um, But it's speaking in tongues. Now, it doesn't matter how you feel. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it again. It doesn't matter how you feel. We're being led by our feelings way too much. Mm -hmm. Well, I feel like, well, there you go. Our thinking is so wrong. Until your mind has been thoroughly renewed by the word, your thinking and understanding may be off. There's a way that seems right to a man, but it leads to death, it says in Proverbs. So we got to stop going by how we feel. Stop going by how you feel, saints. Stop going by how you feel. I'll say it again. Stop going by how you feel. Your feelings is trash. You have feelings. God gave you these feelings so you can experience life. How do you know what a mountain is if you know what a valley is? How do you know what hot is if you know what cold is? It's not to be led by your feelings. So if you say, well, I feel that, and you're going to go in that direction, you're wrong. You're wrong. Stop being led by how you feel. Before you make a decision, make sure it's not based on your feelings. Make sure it's based on wisdom. 
God's wisdom. God's wisdom. That's it. That's it. Nothing else makes decisions. God's wisdom. Mm -hmm. But I feel, there you go again. I think, uh, there you go. Stop. Please. Stop. And some of you try to pull me in with your feelings. I don't feel sorry for this person. No. No. I'll have compassion, but I'm not feeling sorry for you. I will not. What's that gal's name from the WNBA? Yeah, she got like nine years. I rejoiced. How are you going to take your hide over to someone else's country, smuggling drugs, thinking you're out here in this lackadaisical country full of lackadaisical laws and rules, and you go over there trifling, get nine years, and want to cry? Oh, it's too harsh. And now we're like, oh, hey, we're going to let this Russian assassin go. Let's trade. That's what she gets. People don't change when they see the light. They change when they feel the heat. Sometimes the heat is good. I won't feel sorry for you. No. I will not feel sorry for you. So stop trying to get in touch with my, my emotions, because the only one you're going to get is probably the anger one. <laughs> don't do, you can't do that. I get so many people trying to man manipulate me with their emotions and want to feel sorry for them and pull at them. And I don't do that. That's not me. That's manipulation. I don't like being manipulated. I will not be manipulated. Some of you don't need to go as far as I go, but some of you need to disconnect from following your emotions and be matter of fact, matter of truth. Truth says this. Okay. I listen and obey. I listen and I obey. I'm not perfect. I mess up. But I will always listen and obey. God says go and do something, I'm doing it. So it was a couple of weeks ago before we left out of town. Um, we went to uh, went to Fridays. Nasty. Oh, my goodness. Ooh, that's a nasty restaurant. But my son wanted to go. So I bit the bullet and went, oh, my Lord. That's some nasty food. Even a drink was nasty. What did I get? <laughs> Lemonade. It was, no, it was, well, before I got some kind of tea, oh, yeah. peach or mango tea or something. It's supposed to be sweet, right? It's supposed to be a nice, good, sweet. I almost threw up when I drank that. I said, you know what? You can just give me a lemonade. That was nasty. How do you mess up lemonade? It's water, lemons, and sugar. Mm -hmm. and I was like, it wasn't like nasty to the point where you just put some sweetener in it and it fixes it. Mm -mm. It was like devil juice. Anyway, anyway. So me and my family were there. Oh, and Christina. You know, Christina's always there. I cleared up my taxes last year. Uh, <laughs> but... <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. And so we're there, and it was this huge group uh, to my left. There was this huge group at the table. It was like maybe 20, like 6, 6 12, 15, 16, uh, a bunch of people. How many, about how many was it? It was a bunch of, I don't know, a bunch of people. And the Lord said, I want you to, I want you to pay for the meal. I said, good Lord, Jesus. I said, them? <laughs> I was like, what about that it's, couple it's over 20, there? Yeah, what about that old couple that's sipping on soup? <laughs> <laughs> that's like, you know, 20 bucks max. And he was like, pay for that food. I'm like, oh my Lord. So I was like, okay. So I called the, wait, the waitress over. I said, um, hey, um, can you, uh, I got a question for you. How much is their bill? <laughs> And she said, uh, it's about 300 and something dollars. I said, oh, jeez. And I don't know why I asked. Because no matter what it was, I have to obey. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay. I was like, oh, here we go. Oh, no, no, no. She said it was 400 and something. 400, yeah. It was 400 and something. But um, I saw they had like a bunch of liquor 
at the table too, drinks and stuff. They get down. I was like, they ain't gonna put that on my bill. I said, no, I'll pay for everything except for the, the alcoholic drinks. And so I brought them a three something. And so I did it. And normally I do it and I bless them, don't. But that wasn't this time. You gotta listen and obey. Mm -hmm. So at the end of it, I um, came over, I came over to the table and talked with them just a little bit. And I said, uh, well, I hope you guys enjoy your, you know, the rest of your day. Uh, I paid for all your meals. And then someone laughed, whatever. And then I was like, wait, are you serious? I'm all, yeah. He goes, you paid? No, no. Uh -uh. I said, yeah, I did. I said, God bless you guys. And just made sure you know uh, my motivation and why I was doing it. And I was directed to do that. That's 300 some dollars. Now, just because we have money, you have to be a good steward of money. You don't just and throw money around. You got to be a good steward of what God's giving you. And I know some of you may be in a business where, man, what I could do with $300. Right. Uh -huh. You can be in the same position. Listen and obey. But I said all that to say, no matter what situation, it doesn't, you don't go by how you feel. You don't go by your current understanding. You don't even go by your, what's in your bank account. Oh, I got this bill. But, you know, I got this bill due and this, this, and you calculate. So if you say, hey, I got $200 in my account and you want to pay for these people's food and it costs $175. But I have a bill that's due in three days for $100. If that keeps you from doing what God told you to do, you're not ready. Because the way you look at it is, oh, man, God must be going to do something in three days. Mm -hmm. If you're telling me to do this now, I got this bill due. He knows about the bill. And you, he knows you got this bill due. And you want me to give the bulk of my money now? Ooh, Lord Jesus, something's about to happen. And you do it proudly. Woo! Not proudly. We're not, we don't do things out of pride. Joyfully. You do it with cheer, with joy. Because you know God's about to work in your life. That's what happens, the reaction you have, when you have faith in God. That's how you respond. Man, something awesome is about to happen. Something awesome is about to happen. God's about to move on my behalf. Amen? Amen. That's the way we look at things. Anyway, always just a little bay. Don't go off of how you feel. You know what? I got I to gotta say, everything has an ear. Everything can hear. Everything. What are you talking about, Pastor? Well, in Mark 11, uh, he says, say to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast in the sea, right? And then Jesus said, Jesus said, he answered the fig tree, right? The fig tree can hear. The mountains in your life, they can hear. Whatever it is you cannot move with your hand physically, you can move with the power of God, with your words. Everything can hear. Now listen to this. Not everything can speak. We are the only beings that can speak. Animals can't speak. They can communicate. Bees dance. Hornets give off hormones and all that kind of stuff. And dogs smell each other's butts. <laughs> but, you know, they, they communicate, but they can't speak. You understand what I'm saying? We are the only beings that can speak. How did God create this world? With his words. He spoke, right? What is speaking? Our communicating with each other, how I'm communicating with you, is not why we are able to speak. It's not the reason for us speaking. That's not why we speak. We speak to create. That's why we speak. That's our primary function for speaking. Not to communicate back and forth. Not to talk to each other. Like I said, bees and dogs do that, right? Me using my words, I'm speaking in a language that you can understand. Mm -hmm. 
If I started speaking in another language that you don't understand, I'm still speaking, right? You just don't understand it, right? So if I speak in a language that no one understands, God does. But it doesn't take intellect. No intellect can pick up what I'm speaking from my heart. So when I'm speaking in tongues, I'm speaking to God. So I don't want us to, I don't want us to get confused or hung up on, well, tongues and tongues. I'm, simp- I'm speaking just like I'm speaking to you. I'm just not talking to you. That's what tongues is. You understand? Do you know you, whatever your na- na- national language, whatever? Do you, can you speak that? Ebo? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Uh, do you know that? Do you guys know that? Do you, do you speak it? Yeah? I can speak it. Okay, you speak it. Yeah. So if you, if you told me something in your language and I don't understand it, does that mean it's nonsense? No. 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 So if I speak in my heavenly language, that's because you don't understand it. Is it nonsense? No. No, Absolutely. it's not. I'm speaking to God. That's what speaking in tongues is. That's what speaking in tongues is. I laid at the rest for somebody. I don't know who it was, but I laid at the rest for someone who was having questions about speaking in tongues. And you constantly get filled with doubt when you speak in tongues. Do it. Speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. Continue it. Okay? All right. I'll leave it there. We got one more question? Yes. Do we have time for that you, you guys want one more? We're way over. We're way over. You guys want to do the last question? No. Yes. We can stop now. All right, see, I got your permission. Okay, all right, shoot, you ain't got the cuss. <laughs> what authority, if any, do I have in my adult children's lives? None. Specifically, how should I be praying for them? Can I take authority the same way I did before they reach the age of accountability, or do I just pray for them as I would any other person, like praying for laborers, for their heart to be soft, that kind of thing? Um, no, so you don't, you can't pray the same way. Um, you know, Job made that mistake. Right. Job was trying to pray over his adult kids as if they were still young and he was covering them. No, you can't do that. Um, they're adults. They make their own decisions. They're going to reap what they sow. Mm-hmm. They are going to reap. Reaping and sowing is a spiritual law. It's a spiritual law, right? So when you reap or excuse me, when you sow something good and you reap something good you don't complain do you no <laughs> oh but all of a sudden we want god to halt all creation <laughs> when you're about to reap something bad because of your bad sowing well when you're an adult you will reap what you sow it is a spiritual law okay so with that being said when our children are under age i'm gonna read it because um i wrote it out and i don't want to miss anything when our children are under age then we are their source for everything. Not God. We are. As parents, we're our kids' source. This is why we see children dying. Now, those who do pass on absolutely go to heaven because God is not a cruel God. So kids will pass on. They'll die just as quick as an adult will die. God doesn't come in because they're children and intervene. Nope. What moves God? His word. So as long as our children are underage, our job is to protect them, not only physically, but spiritually as well. It is our responsibility to transition our children of us being their source to God being their source. When the Bible calls for us to train up our children in the way that they should go, that does not mean to just discipline them. It means that we must show them how and be an example of making God their source. So training up a child the way they should go doesn't mean you just whip them when they do something that you told them not to do. It means you living a life as an example mm-hmm. of how to make God their source. Right. They see God working in your life. They see you turn to God in every decision making. And then that's how they grow up. You train them up in the way that they should go so when they're older, they won't depart from it. We cannot cover them in prayer as adults, as we once did when they were um, children or before the age of accountability. We cannot do that. We cannot cover them the way that we do when they were kids. 
They're living their own life. They're making their own mistakes. Romans 14, 12 says each of us will give a personal account to God. Hebrews 4, 13 says nothing in all creation is hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes. And he is the one to whom we are accountable. So we're all accountable to God. And the age of accountability is different for each one. When you know that your actions has consequences and you're, um, you're, you can make that judgment call, you're at the age of accountability, knowing right from wrong. That's when you're at the age of accountability. But we cannot cover our kids when they're adults as we do when they're children. We can't do that. Okay. Any other questions off that one? Anyone confused or don't like the answer? <laughs> I know we want to. We never stop loving our kids, our children. I keep saying kids. Kids is a goat. We never stop loving <laughs> our children. Uh, but, yeah, we need to pray. Laborers come across their path. Uh, Holy Spirit, continue to draw them in. Mm-hmm. Let them thirst for you, Lord. You know, there's all kinds of things that we can pray, but we cannot, we cannot declare the word. Wake up, Luke. Uh, we cannot cover it. Your kids, so I call them out. Uh, we cannot uh, 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 cover our kids, uh, our children, as adults, as we do when they were before the age of accountability. Uh, Clinton had a question. Uh, so just to elaborate on that, when you said covering, is it just like taking care of them in general, make sure they're, like, they're doing their due diligence? And no, it's that? praying over them. It's oh, praying. praying. Them. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, yeah, okay. Spiritually. Yeah, okay. Of course, you're supposed to physically take care of your kid, oh, okay, but okay, spiritually. Okay. Yeah, you can't protect your kids when, when if you choose to give them public school mm-hmm. out with the wolves, then prayer. You need prayer. Okay. okay. The world's crazy out there. You got to cover them by prayer. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's how we cover our kids is through prayer. We pray over them. We declare the word over them. And you teach them the word so they can start declaring it for themselves. All right? Psalms 91. Declare the word. Amen. Anybody else had a question? I thought it was another hand, no? Okay. Um, that was a good service, Pastor. Uh, be sure to get in midweek service on Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. We'll go over these questions again, and you can ask more questions if you have them. Yeah, a lot of y'all played hooky because we were gone out of town. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know who I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. We get reports. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we got phone calls. Trifling. But get in the midweek Bible study. Sharpen each other. Mm-hmm. Sunday, you can't go through all the week just on Sunday. You can't go on just on Sunday and Wednesday. But we're there for you, Sundays and Wednesdays. Get in the Word. Sam, I want to see you in the Bible study this week, okay? Wednesday night. All right. Good. It's good to have you. Thank you for visiting us. Hope we, I hope you come again. And uh, it'll be a different setup. But we love you already. We like you better than Courtney. Where do you go? <laughs> he oh, left. It took too long. He loved it. No, I'm oh, I'm all wrong. <laughs> all right. So, uh, yeah. So, all right. So, remember, you guys are all, you're born for a purpose. You are born for a specific purpose. God created you for that. But it only works by love. It only works by love. If you're not walking in love and forgiveness, there's plenty of chances for you to forgive all the time. Go out right now. You don't have to forgive. Um, walk in love and forgiveness. Amen? Amen. And you know it. Jesus Jesus is is Lord. Lord.